At this point, I think um, we can open it up to the audience for questions. I'm going to repeat the questions because um, we're being recorded. So um, I'll try my best to summarize <laughs> what it is that you. Yes. Go back to the installations, the other installations he's done, and maybe tell us where they are. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. And if they're still installed. Uh, this is my. This is what sold the entire Eamon Carter staff <laughs> on doing a project with Gabriel. I, I don't know. Yeah. So this is uh, this was Plexus number nineteen. This is in Italy. It's not up still. It, it came down. But when they first approached me for that show, I was. I mean, I was really happy about the opportunity, but I wasn't expecting much of the piece because I thought the piece was going to compete with the ornateness of the of the building and. Um, it was. I was so blown away how well they talked to each other, and uh, it, yeah, it was just amazing. This is the. This is the one at the Crystal Bridges, places number twenty-seven, and that's a permanent piece. It's in the stairwell, so make sure you go downstairs. Right, make sure you don't take the elevator. And then they've actually had to put um, warnings <laughs> on the floor to watch your step yeah. because people are so mesmerized with their childlike yeah. wonder. Yeah, and it's funny that year that was that's that piece is from 2014. That's the year um, I did a lot of semicircles and curves, which um, for some reason that year. I didn't even follow my own instructions. The question was, can you show us some of the other installations <laughs> where they were? Um, this was at the Dallas Contemporary here in Dallas, obviously. Um, I love this one. <laughs> this piece is still up. This is at the BYU Museum of Art in Provo, Utah. Um, yeah, this piece is quite... Um, spectacular. Many people ask us if this is the lar this plexus at the Eamon Carter is the largest um, that you've done. It's one. So up. it's one of. <laughs> it's really hard to say which one is bigger because some pieces uh, might have you know 90 miles of thread, but they may be more compact, which is the case of the San Antonio Airport piece, which um, is up as well and. Um, but it, that piece, in terms of overall scale, is not as big as this. Yeah. Um, so depend, depending on what metric you use, it might be. So yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest. And this is an international fame causer. And we just <laughs> want to talk about where this was and this the ripple the, effects of this. Uh, at the Smithsonian's uh, Renwick Gallery. And I think this caused a whole um, ripple effect of the influence, the, the relationship of museum visitors to social media. Um, oh, yeah. You became the um, evidence that people are engaging with museums in a different way using social media because yeah. the Renwick Gallery and their reopening um, had this piece up and their entire Instagram feed became Gabriel Da. <laughs> Not all um, and then someone from across the street came to visit. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Did you get to meet Michelle? No, I was not there. No. I was not even. They, I, I, I was really hoping she would show up for the, um, one of the many openings because there were like four or five different openings. Um, and the actual invitation for the two black tie dinners was like, Michelle Obama invites you because she's sort of the... Uh, ambassador. The ambassador. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so, but no. <laughs> I did not meet her, unfortunately. Other questions from the audience? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Bernardo Valerino. Um, I'm a local sculptor and a teacher here. And um, I say my students, all my students, the first part have to do is to come here and have to talk about it and they come back to the class and discuss different things they see in your artwork. And knowing your art uh, coming from uh, threads and gender and all these other issues. One of the questions they bring up is the rainbow, which is tied to the LGBT community. And I explained to them that you know they're just not completely tied up. So how do you normally answer that question about that? And Maggie, I do have a question for you as well. Sure. At the beginning of the movie, you were talking. You were surprised that Gabriel was a local, local yes. art, you know, uh, not for Texas artist. What is the Adam Carter doing for local artists, you know, to help us out uh, so that we don't have to leave the 
the Dallas yes. Fort Worth area. No one outside, so they can come back eventually, like Gabriel did. Okay, I'm going to summarize yeah. the questions. Thank you. That's I'm so glad that you bring your students to the museum. That's that's. Um, the bread awesome. and butter of what we do. So thank you for doing that. So the first question is, um, the rainbow is connected to the LGBT movement, and is there significance to that in your work? Um, and could you talk about that? And then the second question is for me um, about um, my surprise that Gabriel was local, and what is the Eamon Carter doing for local artists? So uh, I'll let you go first, and then. I was going to say, I'll let you go okay, first. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, my surprise, I guess, actually has to do with an inherent bias from the fact that I'm from New York and uh, lived in the East Coast my entire life and encountered Gabriel's work in an international context. Um, and I'm a curator of historical art. Okay, so you have all those things combined and you think, what is my business to do with contemporary artists? But it has been something um, that has always been part of my curatorial life. That is, um, how can you connect the art of today to the art of the past and vice versa? And I am not laboring under uh, the misconception that people come to the Eamon Carter and immediately gravitate toward 19th century art, even though I do. But if there's a way to pair it with work that deals with issues of today um, by artists from throughout the country, um, then I think we're telling a more full story of American art. And it enhances the experience of um, both the historical and the contemporary. Um, so as part of my um, academic background, um, I've always written papers and engaged in studies of artists like Winslow Homer and John Singer Sargent and James McNeil Whistler and all those greats of the 19th century. However, at the same time, I've always worked with living artists to help them realize their commissions. There's something um, truly powerful for me about working in a museum um, that allows me to combine those two factors in my job, in my everyday job. This was not always um, something that the Eamon Carter did, but is increasingly important to us um, as a way of opening up what American art means and what its definition can be for our audiences. And I think we have a duty to local artists. Since I've started working with Gabriel and Benito Huerta and other um, area artists, you'll see um, Daryl Louster from UT Arlington um, in our main gallery. Since that's happened, I find it really refreshing to go on studio visits, to go around Dallas and Fort Worth, pretty much because I came here and had no friends anyway. So I find it refreshing <laughs> to be able to go and engage with the local community. And I understand from artists that there are not very many institutions in this region um, that are interested in doing that. So I think this is an area in which the Eamon Carter um, can make a mark. That being said, we would only show the work if it is of the quality that the Eamon Carter um, warrants. And that is what a try. I mean, we would show Gabriel's work um, regardless because it, it holds up to the rest of, of the work that we exhibit. And um, we have a commitment to local artists and so therefore those two Two elements meet in Gabriel's work. Um, an internationally recognized um, artist, um, as well as an artist who may whose star is on the rise, who doesn't it doesn't have the recognition of Gabriel, but who is saying something meaningful um, that will appeal to our audiences that can really um, enliven our historical collection. So the rainbow and the LGBT movement. Yeah. Um, so um, I was just thinking. Um, how I was really happy that when the Supreme Court came with the ruling in favor of gay marriage, um, people would post my work like "Love Has yeah. Won," and I thought that was really really cool. I, I have never made it to be about gay rights, um, but I mean, if people see that in it, um, you know, I mean, there's a piece um, at the. Resource Center, which is the LGBT community center in Dallas, um, that I donated, um, and that's another piece that you can go see. Um, and it's a rainbow. <laughs> I certainly think that there is something about inclusion and joy that's oh, yeah, and, and peace and all the colors that is right. incorporated in your work. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, but I've never really made it about gay rights. But I do think it's about inclusion. Uh, it's you know, I mean, it's it's the idea that every color of light comes together to form white light. I mean, it's sort of like a universal um, principle of sorts that all is one. So in that sense, uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yes? Um, you mentioned your cabling as a, a driver in you finding your voice as an artist. So I wonder how has your work now been perceived in your country and, and culture of origin with that background of gender and identity definitions and, and experience growing up. So I'll, re I'll repeat the question. So the connect, uh, Gabriel talked about his family and the connection to his family. How has your work been received in Mexico by your family members, by um, a culture that is invested in machismo that you were working <laughs> against? Um, I mean, my, my family loves it. Um, my grandmother, um, she passed away before I was doing the installation, so she never, um, she never saw them. But um, I'm sure she would have been really proud of them. Um, I haven't, I've never shown in Mexico, so that is still something that needs to happen. Um, and um, ironically, the only piece that's in Mexico. It's in, <coughs> excuse me, it's in um, a U.S. consulate as part of the Art and Embassies program. Yeah. So it's technically not in Mexico. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I'd love to have a show in Mexico City. Um, so, um, yeah. Do we have time? Oh, we, so we have, uh, yes, <laughs> we have time for one more question. <clears throat> yes. Are they always in the works? Yes. Are, are your works always oh. indoors? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, up to now, yes. Stay um, tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a uh, dream institution you'd like? Uh, I mean, beyond the Eamon Carter, because that was it. That's <laughs> it. It's not. Um, oh, gosh. Um, because now is the time to put it out on the internet, you know, in case the Guggenheim is listening. Well, <laughs> obviously the Guggenheim, but... <laughs> Um, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, so many. Um, a turbine hall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For, explain to uh, uh, the Tate Modern. The Tate Modern, oh, which, which has is this in a converted um, industrial space. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> well, stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thank I was, well, yeah, anyway. yeah. No, 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 no. Please, no, no. I don't want to cut well, it off. Well, you know, going uh, back to this idea of uh, placing the work within a historical surrounding, um, I would love to do one in a Venice in flat. So. Venice Biennale, something like that. I don't know. I'd love sounds to. good. I would love to. <laughs> Well, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, Gabriel, and thank you all of you. Thank you all for, <laughs> for coming here. <laughs> it's so handy, all y'all.